Uh, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Today is September the 27th, 2017. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you've heard a host of people, right? Jamie Dimon, most recently Jordan Belfort, right? The Wolf of Wall Street, taking aim at cryptocurrencies, calling things like Bitcoin a fraud, right? Now, what I want especially millennials to think about is whether or not the current debt can be paid in these dollars, not crypto, but United States fiat currency, right? Let's go further. And I know millennials are thinking about how indebted their generation is with regard to student loans. Well, let's talk about pension responsibilities, right? Let's just think it through. You're hearing crypto is somehow fraudulent. The argument I'm making here is that there is huge fraud in the financial markets, right? And that fraud's coming from fiat currency obligations, right? Now let's pick a glamorous city in the United States, right? I'm not even going to pick the low-hanging fruit here. I'm not going to pick Chicago, a state where current taxpayers are paying a huge percentage of their taxes for people who are already retired, receiving pension benefits from the government. No, let's pick sunny Los Angeles. Southern California. Let's talk about fraud. You think about where you want to invest. Now let me back up here one bit because unfortunately too many of these financial conversations take place in isolation. What I want you to do, especially if you don't own crypto, or if you do, just think about your non-cryptocurrency investments. What I want you to do is to think about how many of those investments are earning 7.5% rate of return, right? Think it through. We're having a bull market in stocks, right? Times are supposed to be good in Wall Street. They're telling you that the unemployment rate is low. Let's define they the United States government, right? You're hearing that the unemployment rate is low. This is supposed to be a bull market. Now in your personal portfolio, excluding cryptocurrencies, are you earning 7.5% as your rate of return, right? I'm guessing many of you are not. If you follow financial news, if you follow hedge funds, right, these are supposed to be risk-taking outfits for very wealthy individuals, people with some market savvy. You're going to find very few, I'm talking about very few, in this market of close to 0% interest rates, right, in this bond bubble market. You're going to find very few hedge fund managers who have been able to return a 7.5% rate of return, right? So, think it through. Unless your pension plan is being run by Warren Buffett, is being run by Mario Gabelli, is being run by David Tepper, Jim Chanos, right? Unless your pension plan has some administrator who is balling on a level that very few can, very few, understand you're not getting a seven and a half rate of return. 
to the ETF crowd out there. Take a look at your rate of return. You're not coming close to 7.5%, are you? Right to the gold bugs out there. Look at the price of silver right now. Let's all concede it's at 2008 levels. Right? It's been flat. I know there's been volatility, but overall it's been flat for the last nine years. So understand, if you want a fraudulent number here in the economy that's being bandied about, a 7.5% rate of return is a fraudulent number. Now, understand in the world of pensions, if you go to pensions and investments right now, a great website here online, right? And they talk, obviously, about pensions and investments. You'll find out that for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2016, the median return for pension funds was 1.07%. Right, again, let me repeat that. 1.07%. Right, well less than 7.5%. Well less than 7%. Let me also point out that the prior fiscal year, according to Wilshire Trust Universe Comparison Service, yielded a median return of 3.43%, less than half of a 7.5% return. In fact, less than half of a 7% return. Now, would it surprise you to know that in the city of Los Angeles, some of the biggest pensions, for example, the Los Angeles City Employees Retirement System right, was operating under the assumption that they would be able to generate a rate of return of 7.5%. Right, folks, let's just say that this outfit shouldn't be confused with Alphabet or Apple Computer right, or Amazon. Right, this pension plan thought it was going to return 7.5% to its beneficiaries. Let me point out the problem here. When they fail to reach that target, and when the plan is underfunded, and by the way, that pension plan I just mentioned, their funded ratio is less than 70%. In other words, the money they're going to have to pay out to their beneficiaries, they don't even have 70% of it. Just to understand that when a pension fund like this has a shortfall, guess what the local government does? It tries to get the money from you and me. Right? You'll hear that the pension beneficiaries need to get paid. They're older people who have donated into the system and that it would be inherently unfair for these beneficiaries not to get back what they were promised. Even when what they were promised wasn't remotely realistic. Again, look at your own portfolio. Just read these prospectuses from hedge funds. I'm telling you, in 2017 America, you're lucky to get 7.5%. By the way, in the hedge fund business, you pay dearly for that rate of return. Right? You're paying dearly for that rate of return. Here, these pension plans have fictional targets that they can't reach. And of course, they're bankrupt when those targets can't be reached. 
Let's talk about another pension in Los Angeles. This is the Los Angeles Fire and Police Pension. Right? Firemen, cops, powerful political groups. Right? Just understand that they're better funded than the other pension I mentioned. Right? But even their funded ratio is less than 90%. By the way, their discount rate, like the other pension, 7.5%. That's fictional. If Jamie Dimon or Jordan Belford want to talk about fraud, this is what they should be talking about. Folks, I'm singling out Los Angeles. Understand this pension crisis is national right now. I want you to look at what's happening in Illinois. I want you to look at what's happening in Connecticut. I want you to look at what's happening in Kentucky. This is a national problem. Just understand, the debt, the financial obligations that these pension plans have cannot be paid in our current dollars. It can't be paid in these dollars. Something's got to give. Either the financial obligations get reduced and you're a pension holder being told that you're going to get less than you thought you were going to get because your pension plan didn't come close, didn't even make it 50% to the goal of 7.5% rate of return, right? Or the government quietly is going to water down the purchasing value of your dollars, right? It can't pay the debt in these dollars. But if it doubles the money supply, if suddenly current dollars are worth $2 tomorrow, then maybe it has a chance to pay down this debt. Maybe that rate of return from two years ago of a little under 3.5%, if you water down the dollars enough, can look like 7% with watered down dollars. Right? Understand, as you yourself know, just looking at yourself and your neighbors, the taxpayer is tapped out. Right? I'm guessing most of us don't have a bunch of money sitting around. So when they come to you and tell you that the Los Angeles Fire and Police Pension Plan is running low and that they, they have to adjust their fictional expected rate of return of 7.5% down to 3.5%, which is still, by the way, three times what the rate of return was for the fiscal year ending in June of 2016, right? I'm guessing when government comes knocking on your door to raise your taxes, to bail out this pension plan where the beneficiaries didn't put in remotely enough for the pension benefits they're receiving, I'm guessing many of you, many of us, are going to say, whoa, I need this money. I have a family. I have student loans. I have a house in this housing market that is excessive by historical standards. So, if you know that there's pressure to water down American fiat currency, if you know that it's just a matter of time before people in places like Southern California say to their elected representatives in the Congress, look, we need help. We can't pay these bills with these dollars, you're going to have to either get more tax revenue, and if that's not possible, you're going to have to water down the currency. Right? You know that's going to happen. Someone running for president of the United States is going to hear from a bunch of states that are having 
fiscal problems. How many states out of the 50 do you think qualify for that statement? 49? All 50? Right? People are going to say, look, we can't tax our people more. I mean, after all, if you're paying, if you're funding to close, funding gaps for cops and firemen who are already retired, understand that's not helping the current police and fire protection that you're receiving from current police and firemen. In other words, if you move to Chicago and you're paying for people who've already retired, how is that increasing your current quality of life? How's that increasing fire and police protection in the neighborhood in which you live today? So, I believe savvy investors here have a choice, right? They can keep their assets in dollar-denominated investments, right, or in dollars. And they could watch the value of those investments decrease as the value of the dollar decreases, right? That's what happens when a currency has too much debt associated with it, right? Understand, not everyone who holds dollars is American. If I'm Chinese and I have an opportunity to participate in different bond auctions, am I going to pick the bond auction that's saddled with the most debt? Wouldn't that leave the currency I'm investing in at risk of being devalued? Right? So, you could either just say, look, the dollar has survived this far. You can overlook the deterioration in the value of the dollar from 1971 to now. Just Google it. You can say, hey, <clears throat> this year it's going to be different. It's not going to devalue like it did during the 70s, during the 80s, during the 90s, during the O's. No, this time it's different. The dollar is going to keep its value, right? You could be that guy. Or you could be the person who's looking for alternatives. Maybe that's gold. Maybe that's silver. Maybe that's palladium. Maybe it's Bitcoin. Maybe it's Monero. Maybe it's Dash. Maybe it's Litecoin. Maybe it's Zcash. Maybe it's Zencash. Right? Let me just say this, too. I believe it's probably easier on your back to carry around a digital wallet filled with digital cryptocurrency than it is to carry around a sack filled with gold coins that you're hoping to use in commerce. Right? So, the next time someone like a Jordan Belfort decides to get themselves on TV, a Jamie Dimon decides to get himself on TV right when a big cryptocurrency conference is being held in Aspen and starts to say things like, Bitcoin is a fraud. Let's have someone from the crowd raise their hands and ask the question, compared to what? Right? The answer, in my opinion, can't be the US dollar. Not with these pension shortfalls. For those keeping track, the total net pension liability for Los Angeles pensions, just three, the Los Angeles City Employees Retirement System, the Los Angeles Fire and Police Pension, and the Los Angeles Water and Power Employees Retirement Plan just those three pension plans, the net pension liability for just the city of Los Angeles is more than $10 billion. We're in the age of the internet. You don't have to trust me on any of these numbers. You can Google them for yourself, right? Does the city of LA have this money lying around? What happens 
If the economy takes a turn south, haven't you heard more than one market commentator right now say that this bull market is on its last legs and we're headed for a recession? You think LA is going to have this money laying around to close this fucking <laughs> shortfall if things turn south? So, unless cryptocurrency is qualitatively worse than fiat currency, let's refrain from saying Bitcoin's a fraud. Unless you're able to answer the second part of the statement compared to blank. Right? Bitcoin's a fraud compared to what? Please don't tell me with a government that officially has a greater than $20 trillion debt of U.S. dollars. Please don't tell me that the dollar makes you feel much more secure than Bitcoin. Right? Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me just point out too. The fact that the pension crisis isn't even being mentioned that much in mainstream media shows you how ineffective and lethargic legacy media has become. This, along with the student loan crisis, is one of the biggest issues of our time. I was best man at a friend's wedding, his first wedding, right? This is 2017. Some people get married more than once, right? I myself am divorced. I was best man at a friend's wedding. The friend was shopping around for a job and he got several offers. And as he was weighing the offers, he and I were talking and he said to me, yeah, you know, one of the kickers is that the employer, it was a public entity employer from Los Angeles, was promising him that the pension plan would grow by 7.5% per year, right? As I said to you before, <laughs> how could anyone make that promise when the median rate of return for pensions is less than 2%, right? When you have negative interest rates for a lot of debt across the globe, Right? If you're looking for fraud, look there. If you're living in a glass house, don't throw stones at innovative financial technology like Bitcoin, Monero, Dash, IOTA, etc. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. If you want to leave some pension numbers for your local pensions. I hope you do so. I can tell you here in San Jose, they imposed a new tax on city residents as part of an adjustment on the long-term expectations on the rate of return for some of the local pensions here, right? They moved them from 7.5% to something like 7.25%. Let me just say the 7.25% is completely fictional as well. But they can't go to you, the taxpayer, and say, you know what, these numbers are all baloney. We need to readjust them down to 2% because that's where we are in this world. Just look at the prices of bonds, right? So of course, they also tried to sell it to the local public as improving police and fire protection. When, of course, the money was going not to current police and firemen, but to retirees. Right? Total farce. What happens when they have to admit that the 7.25% was too optimistic and that the real number isn't 7, 6, 5, 4, 3%. It's probably less than 2% right now. Look at the Dallas 
police pension fund right now. Look at the number of Dallas policemen taking early retirement because they sense that if they wait, the money is not going to be there. This is at a time of record levels in the stock market and unemployment supposedly right, being lower than the historical average. What happens when those numbers change as we enter a recession? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.